Hi everyone and welcome back to Simple Blender Tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to set up a Blender shader and understand the very basics of applying shaders using Blender. So to set up a basic shader, we're going to use the default cube as our example. We need to access the workspace. If we come up to the top, we see all these tabs along here. Now we're looking for the shading workspace, the shading tab here. If you don't see this tab, just hit the middle mouse button and scroll this off to the left or the right, and we can access the tab. Click on the tab, we see a number of areas in front of us. We have file browser over the left hand side, we have the image editor, we have the shader editor, and we have the 3D viewport. We're going to be mainly using the viewport and the shader editor. You notice already a material has been created. It's placed in the two default nodes. If we started a new material, so I'm going to hit the crosshair, get rid of the material, we'll just see this new button. When we click that, we see the materials here. And as we have the cube selected, the materials are applied to this cube. We can rename the material. I'm just going to call it cube material for the time being. So this can be any name. And we can start defining the material for the cube. Now, if we look towards our viewport, we can change the rendering. We hit Z on the keyboard and we get our pie menu up. At the moment, we're using the material preview, but we could use solid, rendered, or wireframe. The default is material preview, and what we will see is a forest type background, and you can see our background here. To customize our material, we use the shader editor. And you can see we have a material output here, which is the surface of this object. The base color, we just change the base color of that object. Metallic is the slider, how metallic the object is, and the roughness of C is the roughness of the object. If we come right down to the bottom, this is totally smooth. And combining this with our metallic, obviously we'll have a more reflective surface. And if we bring this roughness right up, then we have a less reflective surface. But this goes beyond base color, metallic and roughness, in that we can add nodes to this shader. I'm going to give this object some color using the base color. Let's just zoom in a bit so we can see what's happening. Now we've got our color. Let's add some texture. For this, I'm going to add a node. Come up to add. We have a number of nodes to add. And this can be mixed and match, very similar to geometry nodes. For instance, I'm going to add a texture and I'm going to create a noise texture. Once we've selected that, our node is displayed and we can drop it into place. At the moment, this isn't connected to anything. The noise texture is what it says on the tin, it creates noise. There are a number of options in here and these options are detailed more on the Blender website. But now I'm going to use 3D noise. Now take the color and drag out from that and place it into the base color. You can see the properties of the noise has been mapped to colors. If we change this now, you can see how that's changing in the model. We can bring out the detail and change this to what we want. If I wanted to use the noise as say some kind of texture on there, and let's just remove the color. I'm gonna come up to add, come down to texture, I have a number of textures in there, but what I want is the vector. And I'm looking for bump, create a bump map. Let's click that and we can drop this in. You notice I have a normal property here, which I can take and link up the normal property of our main node. So we have the bump in there. Set the distance if we wanted to and the strength. 
nothing much is happening at the moment because we need some data for this. For that, I'm going to use the noise texture. The noise texture has two outputs, one for color and one for a factor. If I drag the factor to say the height, the bump, then we can use the noise in our bump node and transfer that to the normal. I can make modifications in the bump and you can see it being reflected on the model itself. I can go even further with color and place that on base color and using both. You may have to wait a little while for it to be reflected in the preview. As we change this, you can see it changing in the model itself. Let's apply this material to another object. At the moment, we have a cube. I'm going to come up to add, come down to meshes, and let's add the monkey. I'm just going to hit G to grab and pull it off to the side. As you can see, there's no material added to this. And we don't see the material in here. If I click on the cube, we see we have the material for the cube. So to apply this material to Suzanne the monkey, we click on Suzanne, click in our materials, and then click on the cube material. That's been applied to our other object. If we look to the shader editor and look at the material, see the two by the side of it. This is the number of users that is using that material. The users are the objects, in this case, Suzanne and the cube. We remove the material, we click on the object, and then click on the cross by the side of it. And see the material has now been removed. If I click on Suzanne, we see the material still exists. Now, if I remove the material from Suzanne, the material will be removed from Blender. Because it's not being used, it's saved in something called a data block. The shield by the side of here is the fake user option. It says save this data block even though it has no user. This will safeguard the material from being deleted. So if you wanted to build up a library of materials, then you can use the fake user to apply to each of the materials so they're not cleaned up by Blender. We click that, that material is now saved. So if I click on Suzanne and delete it, the material has been removed. And you can see we've still got the material within. Let's create a new material and just change the color. We'll call it blue. That's sitting there now. If we look at the materials, we can see we've got the cube material and blue, and also the original material here. So if I remove the material from Suzanne, the material looks like it's still there, but when we save, we see that the material is still there. If we close and reopen the project and look at the materials, you can see it's been removed. But we have our original material here, the cube material, which we set up with a fake user. The Blender has left this one for us, cleaning up the others that haven't got a user. In other words, the object that's using it. So that's a basic introduction of how to use the materials. Obviously, it goes much deeper than this, but this will get you up and started for using those materials. Hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope to see you in the next one. If you're enjoying these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page, that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mj3dstudio. Any donations will be used to help to span the channel. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.